Because, like, if you're fighting an old person, you're relying on physical, like, you know, like decrepitude, uh, sort of securing the victory for you. But uh, if if it hasn't affected them, the, the, clearly they're powerful beyond reckoning, and th and then you have a serious problem. Who's your favorite version of that trope, by the way? Like the anime, like oh, he's like a million years old, but he's secretly really strong. For me, it's either Bang from One Punch Man or um, Chairman uh, Nitero from Hunter x Hunter. To me, like those two. Whenever I think of it, it's those two. Iro, oh, Iro's a good one too. Iro's a good one. Though I, I mean, Iro was, no, no, Iro kicked, yeah, Iro kicked crazy ass, yeah. Um, Chairman Netro is so based, yeah, one hundred percent. Can we take can we take five minutes to chill from the doom and gloom the stream has been otherwise? The Chairman Netro is one of my favorite characters from any media ever. If you if you haven't watched Hunter Hunter, that's in my opinion maybe the best shown in anime, though it's unfinished. Um, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood benefits from having its ending, which I think makes it the best. But in terms of like its high points, I don't think anything comes above Hunter Hunter. Netero is the closest thing to a main antagonist Hunter Hunter has. I disagree. I think he's fucking phenomenal, man. The first arc of Hunter Hunter wasn't that great. It's like up six or seven episodes in once you get past the um, hero, not hero, god, the Hunter Association, the Hunter license arc or whatever. Uh, I think that it really, really picks up after that. Um, in my opinion. Boomy from ATLA. Yeah, that's also a good one. 100%. Yeah. I love Hunter Hunter, but don't you think Hisoka is creepy AF? Yeah, I think that's kind of the point. Renewing so you'll talk about Hunter Hunter more. Klaus Mouse, thank you for the tier three sub. I really appreciate that. As much as I would love, I would I would love to. Can I can I just five? Can you give me five minutes? Okay, on this, if you don't want to hear spoilers for Hunter Hunter, for which the manga has been around for ages, then I guess you don't have to listen. But you know, I really like Netero because. Okay, tell you what, if you want to mute for a little bit, I'll hold my hand up when I'm done, okay? There, I'll set you know. Uh, it's, it's only to the end of the, um, the, uh, the Antark. Um, yeah, it's never going to finish. Uh, but anyway, like, the thing that I really like about Netero is that he's such a perfect inversion of the type of character that you usually see there, you know? Like, Netero comes off at first like this goofy old guy, and, like, you know he's strong. He's clearly very strong from the first time that you meet him. Uh, but, you know, normally the trope with those kinds of guys is that they're, like, soft on the inside, but, like, hard on the outside, you know what I mean? Like, they're gruff, and they're kind of mean, but they're doing it because they love the protagonist, and then they believe in them, and they trust them, and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, that's the trope, I think. But Netero is the complete opposite. When at first you meet him, he's like this insanely nice, like, cool, goofy dude. But at the end, he's fucked. Psychologically, he is fucking broken when he fights um, Meruem in, in the final fight of his life, which is just a spectacular fight, even without, like, his broader characterization. It becomes clear he doesn't give a fuck about anything except the thrill of beating the shit out of people who can nearly beat the shit out of him. And that's it. And everything else has just been this hollow half-life. Like, you really get the impression that back when he was young and he wasn't as strong as he is now, that life was exciting for him back then. And, and ever since that, it's just like all the kindness and everything has just been like this just empty... Oh, you've held up your hand? Fuck, I'm not holding up my hand. Sorry. Uh, I, I put the wrong hand up. Um... Is his Nen power the ability to summon a god? Well, he summons like a spirit projection that's made out in the form of a Buddhist de uh, deity, I think. But anyway, anyway, the um, nor normally with like characters like that, with no, we're not done yet. I will let you know, Jesus. Normally uh, with characters like that, you know, they really, really care about fairness. You know what I mean? Like they care tremendously about, like, the fair fight. Like, that's a really common blood warrior trait, like people who just live to fight. It's that, at the end of the day, they care most about, even, uh, like, higher than justice, they care about, like, the glory of a good fight. But he does not give a fuck at all. Um, because in the final fight of his life, uh, he fucking 
weeks before even having it, he brought a fucking nuke with him so that even if he lost, he would, he, it's a suicide bomb. He would take them both out. What a phenomenal subversion of character where normally people like him are supposed to be like dark and troubled, but still like very kind hearted on the inside. And also that even if all they care about is fighting, they worship like the glory of fair battle. He doesn't give a fuck about either. I don't think. Um, it, it like it, it, he it, he just wants fighting. Fuck you. He doesn't care. What were his last words? Like, don't underestimate the malice of humanity. Yeah, and the first time Meruem, who is a literal like demigod, felt terror, was experiencing the cruelty humans were capable of. That as inhuman as Meruem had been up to that point, it was nothing compared to the you know the will and the drive of a person willing to nuke themselves to cheapen what was a fair fight before that point. It is such an unbelievably good scene, and in my opinion, easily beats out like any other final fight of any arc in any series that I've ever seen. Uh, there's just so much that goes into it. It's so insanely fucking good. Uh, and, only, and, and only after watching that, by the way, did I realize I'm pretty sure that the One Punch Man fight with Boros was a reference, like a heavy, heavy reference to um, to uh, the final fight between Meruem and Netero. Because there's so much in common between both of them, you know? In both of them, uh, you kind of end up sympathizing with the villain, Boros and Meruem respectively, because uh, of the monstrous power or malice of the opposition. Uh, in both cases, most of the fight takes place in this giant, like, abstract hall with these huge pillars. Both of them have the same fighting arena. Um, and in both of them, the ultimate point of the fight was that there was never actually a fair fight to begin with. That's the realization made in both cases. Meruem and Boros's final moments are realizing that the opposition, because Saitama is so strong, and also uh, because Netro brought a fucking nuclear weapon with him. Uh, I, I, I think it's, it's a very deliberately a reference, and I respected it a lot more after realizing that. Um, okay, we're done. Sorry. Yeah, Meruem was absolutely the honorable one in that combat. Okay. Um, isn't Hunter Hunter super transphobic? No, actually, the opposite. This isn't spoilers, by the way. I've, I've talked about it uh, before, but actually, earlier work from that mangaka, the one who did Hunter Hunter, he also did Yu Yu Hakusho. And Yu Yu Hakusho had some wild transphobia in it. I've talked about this before, but I don't know if it got made into a segment, and it's so crazy that I kind of feel the need to. Uh, if I if I look up Yu Yu Hakusho trans, oh, the whole episode's on YouTube. That tends to happen with older stuff, I guess. It's that was so unhinged. Okay, wait, let me just set the scene for you, okay? Yu Yu Hakusho is transphobia. Okay, hold on one second, okay? Just a moment, okay? I swear this is interesting, even if you don't give a fuck about anime. I promise you, okay? Okay, so Yu Yu Hakusho is a really classic shonen anime. You know, it's influential, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but, uh, you know, you have standard... There's, like, a lot of sex comedy in Yu Yu Hakusho, like, standard 90s, 80s anime stuff, like, falling on girl's boob grabbing it like it's anime yeah okay so but nothing prepared me for this okay this was absolutely wild to me okay can you show a bit of it i i don't really think i can uh I, i'm trying it's been like a, a year since i've seen it but like basically you know uh the the protagonist and his gang of like you know good guys are trying to fight their way through the evil castle you know how it is and they come across a bunch of enemies trying to stop them and one of the enemies is a woman. She's like a like a ninja, and she has like a big rope chain or whatever. Anyway, uh, the protagonist, you know, uh, Yusuke, jumps at her, and they like both meet in the air, and it does the anime thing where it's like you know, there's like a flash, and they both land on opposite sides of the room, and the implication is they both attacked so quickly that, um, that that was it was like you know, uh, nobody even knows what happened, and. And I swear to God, this is developed over the course of the subsequent five minutes, but Yusuke groped her, found she had a penis, uh, said she wasn't really a woman. She protests and says, yes, I am. 
And then he said, like, you haven't committed to it hard enough because you still have a penis or something like that. It's it's genuinely wild. I I, I wish I had like a I wish I had like a transcript if Yeah, okay, so here's here's the character, by the way. See, she's like a demon. Oh, I guess she's not really a ninja. She's like a demon. See, she's got like a unicorn horn kind of thing going on. And um I I I, I wish I had the the actual language. Let, let me see if I can. Okay, yeah, this this is a trend. Okay, hold on. Um Kuwabara real Yusuke grabbed Miyuki, that's her name's right breast during the first exchange. Um, uh, uses the whip. No, wait. Oh, here we go. No, here it is. Okay, hold on. Um, Yusuke reveals that Miyuki is a demon crossdresser, and he would have gone easier on a real girl, as Yusuke uh, then explained what happened during their first exchange. After jumping in the air, Miyuki attempted to punch Yusuke. Yusuke brushed her arm aside and groped her breast, and then Yusuke notes her breast could feel like it's an implant or pudding and then reaches underneath her dress to feel her private area, causing Miyuki visible discomfort. Uh, uh, Miyuki then corrects Yusuke by explaining she's not a demon crossdresser, but rather a man in, the, in body but having the soul of a woman. Yusuke then argues that Miyuki is not a real crossdresser, but someone who can't make up her mind. He then advises her to make up her mind before she gets any fights. It's it's really weird. It's not even like normal transphobia because I'm pre the the I've never heard a transphobe say like I'll respect you as a woman when you take it seriously. That's more like turf why? but it's not even it, it, true scum. It's it, it's sorry, not turf, true scum. It's really 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 weird. Like and it comes out of nowhere too. There's nothing prior to or after that that's anything even remotely in the ballpark of that. It's so not, <laughs> it's, it's so incredibly not uh, in line with the tone or content of the rest of the series. Um, anyway, the reason I'm saying, yeah, because there's no other, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's really weird. Um, but anyway, anyway. Um, The reason I'm bringing this up is because somebody asked if Hunter Hunter is transphobic, and I don't think it is, because that came like 10 or 15 years earlier, or sorry, later. Hunter Hunter came out after Yu Yu Hakusho. And in Hunter Hunter, there's a character who is a young uh, girl, like, I don't know, 10, 12, whatever, uh, who is referred to by he, him pronouns by their abusive family but their only non-abusive family member, uh, it refers to her as she, her, and explicitly like defends calling her she, her, and attacks people who aren't. And, 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 and is very clear in that person is in the right. Like, it is, is very morally clear where all the family members who don't use she, her pronouns are the most evil humans in existence. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, says like my sister, you know, and other people don't, they'll say like, our sons, our brothers, or other people will say it, you know, but, uh, so anyway, I think clearly there's been an advancement of, of, of perspective, uh, there, uh, which, which is good, I think. Uh, all right. Show meme. Oh yeah, this, this isn't spoilers enough to be an issue. Yeah, here we go. This is canonically. Just because you look like girls make you one, you're still a boy underneath. There, see? There's the, there's the, the, this is basically exactly what takes place, pretty much. It's you know, pretty, pretty much like point, point for point. Yeah. This is basically canon. Yeah. Um, give me that comic. Uh, here, I'll, I'll link it. There you go. Hell yeah. Neck snap. Neck snapping is not even close to the worst thing Killua does in that fucking show. Psychotic fucking child. I need to rewatch Hunter Hunter. All right, I think we've spent quite enough time talking about anime. Thank you very, very much.